Hello guys and welcome to episode 21 of my Rome 2 Total War campaign, Caesar in Gaul, playing as the Romans. And today we are going to be continuing our armies into the German lands. And we're also going to be attacking the Bitteriges after our second legion replenishes. Now, I think it's probably not a good idea, especially considering I don't have a spy to put my army on the border so I am going to move him back into Nemesos for now and maybe that will increase the replenishment a bit but actually it doesn't look like it will but never mind so we'll, we'll leave him in the city he'll be much much safer there and we've also got the third legion here waiting to be brought out of Vienna once the happiness sorts itself out so it would be maybe a good idea to move on my patrician this turn if I can Oh, I can't, so never mind. Uh, I was going to say I'll put him into the Dunnensis and then I'll be able to start converting the culture and that would really help us out, but never mind. I think that's everything done for this turn, so let's move straight on to the next one. So, Broeox has targeted Nemesos and poisoned the wells, which has damaged my garrison. We've got the Nervi liberating the Remy. The home settlement of this previously destroyed faction has been liberated. Okay, so the Remy have come back. We have Ludi Plebi. Or Plebi is that? So after Rome threw off the rule of the Eastern Etruscan kings in 510 BC, found the Republic Politics was the domain of the aristocratic patrician order who remained distinct from the main body of the free Roman citizens or plebeians. If you would like to read the rest of that, I will slow, slowly scroll that down and you can take a look in your own time. Meanwhile, we have a bonus from this. So we get plus 20% wealth from culture and plus, plus four public order per turn in all provinces. So that's really nice. A free bonus there. We've got the Remy, we've got war declared between the Osismii, and we have them at attacking the Santonas. The Mandubai have been destroyed. Then we have the construction of the Shrine of Jupiter, Public Forum, and Roman Village being finished. Alliance between the Remy and the German Federation. That makes the Germans even stronger. We've got loaded dice for my general Appius Gratius Regulus, which would give plus two morale for all units. What has he currently got? Basically the same. So we're going to send that to the pool, and it inspired Populus for Aquitania. So that's all our event messages looked at. Now let's see what we can do with this army. Now we did get poison wells, so I think we're going to take a little bit longer to replenish in that settlement, which is kind of annoying. So we'll leave him there for now. We'll get my patrician to move into Vienna. And also, what I might do is recruit a spy at Nemesos, because my main spy is all the way up here, Domitia Strabo. Uh, she's checking out all the villages, and she's not getting any XP for that. She's a pretty crap spy, to be honest. But it would be nice to get one down here that can actually assassinate all the agents that seem to be uh, attacking me in, in various areas, which is really starting to annoy me. So let's get a spy out. And we can use her to assassinate certain characters should we need to. Rome? Now we're in Lugdunensis with the patrician. We're going to put him into administration on this side of the border. And that will start to sort out the culture in the province. Now meanwhile, we can get the 5th legion to continue their long journey. We'll put... Caesar into a normal stance if we can. Oh, maybe not. Might put him just across this river though. Then in the next turn I can put him into a normal stance and we can attack Rolricon. Now they don't they won't see this coming, so that's all very well. We've got plus sixteen happiness in Vienna now, so maybe we can move out the army. We'll go down to minus three. And it's only on minus 29 overall. So I think that should be okay because over time the provincial instability will stabilize that. 
So that will be fine. Let's get the third legion to move towards Nemesos. I don't want to get, to get too close to the border for the same reason that I put the second legion into Nemesis. I don't want them to surprise me with any massive armies. So I'm going to keep him just there. Probably should have brought him down a bit so he could get reinforced if he needed to. But that is that for now. Uh, everything is moved. We're going to be completing our technology in the next, next turn, which is nice, which will give us plus one growth in all provinces per turn. And job done. So, let's go ahead and move on to the next turn. After I turn the tax back on. I already have. Okay. Right, let's move on. So, sabotage again in Nebesos. No surprise there. Research complete, like I said would happen. We've got a hidden agent exposed, peace negotiated between the Nervi and the German Confederation. And we have a subject gains notoriety, Gaius and Macrinius Gracchus. These names are insane. Right, so we do have a important character that requires attention. So your daughter is with the child. She swears she has never known the touch of a man and believes that the child is a gift from Mars, the god of war. Well, that's a bit silly. Keep the child. A son of Mars will surely be the greatest general the world has ever known, although there will be those who doubt the truth of your daughter's story. Hide the truth. News of this must ne never meet Rome. Your daughter's reputation will be ruined and your family name tainted, forever tainted. Send her away somewhere to have the baby indiscreet or do nothing. Word of your daughter's indiscretion has already spread like wildfire and there is little you can do now. So do we want to send her away? I think it would be pretty cool to have a child who was the son of Mars. Let's go for it. Right. So, civil war. This indicates the likelihood of a civil war breaking out. The higher the influence of the ruling political party, the higher the chance of... the higher the chance civil war becomes. So I guess we need to get some generals in the SPQR because currently we're completely unbalanced. We've got 100% influence. I don't know if we can do that in this campaign, but we'll have to sort that out at some point. But it is pretty interesting to see all of these new tabs in place. It looks like you can already check out the st stats now. So I don't think any of these actually really affect the politics overall. But um, never mind. We can move on to selecting a new technology. And I'm probably going to go and get production lines. And by doing that, we can start to get some serious money out of all our mines and quarries. So let's get my spy on the move up north. We'll get Postumia Buco to have a look at killing a Broey Ox. With an assassination attempt. She'll probably fail, but yeah, it's worth a try. We wounded him. Good job. So that's actually going to help us quite a, a lot. She should increase in rank from that. Yes, she did. So we're going to improve her cunning. Right. I think the second legion is more or less as replenished as they're going to get. So we're going to move them now into the Bitteriges lands alongside the 3rd Legion. We can't really recruit anything special into the army, so we'll just leave them as they are, as I don't really want to do anything with mercenaries. Make haste, men. Commander, Here we go. So I don't necessarily want to move too far away from the 3rd Legion, but I think it's a bit too late now. Oh well, we'll just move straight on and attack. Avaricon. I didn't think we'd be in range to do this, and holy crap, why is the indicator so far against us? <laughs> was this a bad fight to pick? I don't think it was. They got lots of units of spears, lots of units of levy freemen, and lots of units of Celtic youths, and then more Celtic tribesmen, 
and in the second army they have only two units of Celtic warriors and then more spears. Now the spearmen aren't going to do very well at all against my legionaries, so I don't know why the balance bar is so far against us. Either way, I am going to fight this, and we're going to jump straight in and fight it on the battle map. So, I literally have no idea if this is a good idea or not. We're going to bake it dry. And what I'm going to do is make a sort of defensive formation around my ballistas. So that if the armies do come out to attack me, I can defend them. Because the ballistas are going to be what wins or loses me this battle. So let's spread them out a little bit. I'll move them back just a touch. Then we can fit some legionaries in front. We'll make sure the tower most replenished men are at the front. We can get some depleted men on the flanks. And we can keep a unit of naked warriors on either side. With a unit of levy freemen. The skirmishes in the center. With their skirmish mode off. Our legionary cavalry can remain on the flank with my light cavalry. And this last unit of legionaries can stand with my general behind the rest of the men. Cool. So that's going to be our formation there. We're going to put them into a locked formation. And then we're going to move towards the town. Even if all the world came against us, I would not worry. I command Enemy reinforcements approaching. Let's listen to the general. Oh, looks like he already finished his speech because I moved them on. There's Appius Regulus Legatus. He's our general for today. You can see he's right there in his awesome armor. He's a very nice helmet. Likely we'll see him in battle by the end of the day. Right. Move my cavalry up as well. And once the ballistas are in position, we shall be able to fire onto the mass of men in the square here. <laughs> Holy crap. They seriously have sorted out the FPS issues in this game because there is no way that I would be able to zoom into this before without lagging. <laughs> Holy shit. That is a lot of men. I'm kind of starting to realise why the odds were so against me. <laughs> right, we're going to stop these guys from firing at will. Because I'm going to have to make these shots count. Right. So we've basically got to attack into the place where there is going to be the most men that I can hit. At the moment it's kind of looking like these Gallic warriors. Or maybe these just Le Levy Freemen that are closely packed together, but... Wh cavalry! What I'm going to do is get my cavalry to move over to this right side. And we might get some sort of scouting information as to what's happening up this sort of road here. And then we can maybe fire up onto the hill if that's where the majority of them are clumped up. So we'll get all the cavalry to move over there. And we'll wait for them to do so before firing off the ballistas. Meanwhile, we can just admire the look of our army as we are ready to attack. Okay. As you can see, it is revealing the men who are running up the hill. Spear warriors here. So yeah, this area just here looks like a nice place to fire some shots. So if I can, I will do just that. I think my ballistas are in range to fire there. Yeah, they can fire all the way up to here, actually. So definitely hit here. Let's get some explosive rounds. Target this unit in the middle of them all. Probably just going to target this one slightly off. Never mind, they're moving. So we will continue to target them. 
Target the one in the centre. Possibly we can make one hit these uh, Spear Nobles. So by hitting these Caldic Warriors, it's, it's going to take out one unit that is really a big sort of counter to our legionaries in that they have swords and they can actually be pretty effective against my men. But that was nice hit there. It's Levy Freeman being burned to death by a, a large amount of hits that came into the center. Maybe we should go with flammable rounds. We attack these Levy Freeman. We'll see if that can make a difference. Is that dealing more damage? I'm not entirely sure. Definitely hit a lot of men there. Basically what the flammable rounds do is they just set people alight. And it seems if they roll through multiple men, then they set them all alight. Which with this formation here, you can see as the stones come in, they kill the ones that they directly hit. And they set alight the rest. So that seems to be slightly working for us there. Right, let's try sending some shots into the middle here where we're going to attack first. I am probably going to use up all the blister shots before we head in. One unlucky man took the bounce of the shot that landed in the middle there. Celtic tries have taken an absolute beating. Attack these Celtic warriors. Skirmishes behind taking quite a lot of damage as well. That hit a lot of men there. Hearing them all screaming if they die. Swear I targets at these Celtic warriors, not the skirmishes. There we go, that's hitting more of the targets that I had expected. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Well, that's one of the blisters used up. Oh, is that forcing them to attack me? I have no idea. But that looks ominous. <laughs> oh my god. Let's see if we can get a nice shot into the center here. Can I still fire a ballista even though the men aren't our technically on them? Its like, if I jump into the cinematic view. Can I still fire? No, I can't, because they've run out of ammunition. Okay. Anyway, it looks like they're being forced to attack me, which is interesting, to say the least. These tribesmen should get ripped apart by the skirmishers. We need to make sure that we engage them or, or stop them from running around our flanks. So I'm going to change the position of this legionary unit. And we're going to get the Levy Freeman to sort of wrap them around. Do the same on the right side as well. We can sort of wrap them all the way around. Alright, so let's uh, pause it a sec and give our men some attack orders. That way we can get in the fight without being skirmished to death. Right. So that'll do. We can use these legionaries in the back to defend if need be. Get 
the Levy Freeman to move in the side with the Naked Warriors. We've also got the cavalry on the right flank. Okay, so we managed to catch out some scam units there. Make sure that we get the uh, Naked Warriors to run in and help out. Get the Levy Freeman to continue. We'll get the line here to push up. A lot of the skirmishers, I think, came out in front of the rest of the men. Which has actually caused them to uh, get called out. Right. Get the cavalry to move around the right. We can intercept these noble horse, actually. That will probably be a good move. Okay, how's it going elsewhere? Pretty good. Get my general up. To provide the fear. Put a war cry on these levy freemen. We'll use the fear. Get these legionaries up. These ones as well. Put the naked warriors into a frenzy. Can start to charge my cavalry in the side. Start to free up some more of my legionaries. Okay, so we knocked down a lot of the Levy Freeman there, even though they're technically a counter. I think this is going quite well, though. We need to make sure that my legionaries continue their engagements, though. We don't just stop on the spot. Skirmishers have used up their ammunition. We can charge them in. Get some more backup in the centre here. Get my general to move up and provide some more abilities. If we can use the abilities on, like, routing units, then it will hopefully cause chain routes. Right, we've got our cavalry engaged on the right against the Levy Freeman. I'm going to get some more to move round the side here. And then come in the back. Okay, so we're, we're sort of like making these with our formations, which is which seems to be working much better than I thought it would. A cavalry sort of cleaning up any men that are left behind. make sure that all the routing units remain routing. The general's having a great time here, just standing behind and watching everything die. This is pretty epic though, how we're holding this sort of legionary wall. And on the flanks we've got some, like, Gaelic forces that are chopping everything up. These legionary cavalry aren't doing too great though. So we're going to get them out of there. On the back side. This cavalry fight is going reasonably well, I think. I'm going to turn these cavalry around and charge back in with the flying wedge. And hopefully that'll turn the tide of that fight. Yep, it's causing them to waver. That's really nice. Starting to waver this Celtic tribesman on the right as well, which will free up the naked warriors. In the middle, we're still pushing with the legionaries. And it's really cool, they're like slowly pushing forwards as we're attacking. You can see that my general is slowly getting further and further away from the front line. So we're going to move him forwards a little bit more. Going to provide another ability, put it onto this one that's suffering from a bit of morale loss. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Got my cavalry here that's helping out as well. His cavalry have broken through that unit, so that's nice to see. Going to get them out of there, replace them with the light horse. Okay, we're, we're done back here. Get the cavalry to take out this Celtic Skirmisher unit. So this is going really nicely for us. Looks like there's a unit of Celtic tribesmen just there. Let's see if I can get my cavalry to come round and kill them off. We're going to stop with the flying wedge, otherwise I might break up my own formation. 
Oh, we're being flanked from the left. We'll get the naked warriors to turn and kill them. Put them into a frenzy, so that helps us out. On the side here, we've got the light, light horse and the naked warriors holding back these skirmishers. That's nice to see. And any units that are routing now are just being cut down by this cavalry that are holding ground behind them. So like I've stated before, we're slowly moving forwards with the legionaries, which is actually working much better than I had hoped. We're all slowly moving forwards. We can use, by moving forwards a bit more, we can use the fear again. It's going to affect quite a lot of units. And then we can intimidate the same ones. And we're going to put Warcry on them. This unit of Celtic Warriors here that's steady is going to be greatly affected by that. This is such an awesome fight. You just watch the front line here for a bit. We've got the cavalry mixed in with the infantry. We've got my legionaries holding up healer for no reason. <laughs> but just the hand to hand combat that's going on here just looks, just looks so cool, especially as like the legionary lines are like pushing forwards bashing them with their shields and stabbing them. It's just awesome. It definitely improved the um, mechanics of the AI. And it just looks so cool. The skirmish is actually putting up uh, quite a good fight against my legionary cavalry. We've also got these light horse on the side being taken on by the Celtic slingers. But these naked warriors, even though they're like down to pretty much no men, they're still fighting to the death. It's brilliant. Love it. The enemy general is dead. Okay, so in all that melee fighting, we have managed to kill the general. And now we've got a nice flanking position here onto the enemy. So we're going to continue the push forwards. My Levy Freeman were literally just standing there throwing spears for a second. That was uh, interesting to see. Now I'm going to move around my legionaries on the right here. Because the naked warriors are getting low on men. So we're going to reinforce them with the legionary cavalry and a unit of legionaries. At the back, cavalry still getting a good job of killing off the skirmishers. Gonna break off one unit though. And we're gonna go charge into this Levy Freeman, which have come back. So I'll crush them. Now we have an opportunity to charge into the back of this melee. So we're gonna take advantage of that. Do you know of naked warriors? Well, I don't blame them for running away now. They only have 15 men left. These legionary cavalry to run round. Finish off these skirmishes. Well, it looks like they bumped into the scorpion squad. Right, so we're slowly enclosing now. Killing off the last remaining forces. I'm gonna get my general in there, why not? They provide intimidation and war cry onto fleeing units. Alright, bravo. Okay, so we've got 60 unit of legionary cavalry there. We're gonna put them into a flying wedge and we're gonna charge right into the back of the melee. All right, here we go. Oh, well, that was a bit disappointing. <laughs> oh well. Finishing off the Celtic skirmishes here with the light horse. The enemy general is dead. And now we've got our men finishing off the battle in the centre. 
really awesome to see. And they are well and truly crushed. Holy crap. Look at all those dead bodies. That was mental. Possibly one of the best battles I've had in Rome 2 so far. That was just so cool. Like this looks like proper Roman like tactics right there, just keeping the enemy tucked together in large shield walls. It's just oh it's so cool. I just seriously hope you guys enjoyed that one. It's gonna continue and run down the best rest of these men. I don't know where the remaining men of their army are. Because the end has not come just yet. Unless they've changed the wind conditions to actually capturing the settlement. Hmm. So I'm not sure where the remaining units are. Get some cavalry and go have a look around. Maybe it's a unit that's sort of come back from routing. It's legionary cavalry though. Cleaning up these fleeing units. Got these legionary cavalry up here doing the same. We're going to get the light horse to join in. Nearly captured this here. And it looks like that's what I need to do. So, victory is ours. And we're going to end the battle there. It's a costly victory, but considering the balance bar before I started that fight, I think I did a pretty good job. So 1,097 losses for us and 5,038 for the enemy. So I did lose a unit of naked warriors, but they did fight to the death. But the rest of my men pretty much increased in rank. That is just so awesome. We destroyed the entirety of the Golden Torques. The Howling Carnites. Looks like they're going to get away with it. The Theric victory there. Let's go ahead and occupy Avaricon. Waiting for more orders. Ready for battle. Bravo. So our general is rank three, and we have reached Max Imperium. At your command. That was just so cool. So let's go with soldier plus ten percent charge bonus for all units. That'll make our legionary cavalry a lot more effective. But that is just I, I still can't get over how much better that battle was than the, all of the previous battles we've had. And I think it's just some adjustments that they've made with the Emperor Edition that has made them that much more exciting to watch. So I did save money for a reason. So we are going to be able to convert all of this into useful buildings. This one especially, the Cohort Barracks, that's nice. But I am actually going to do down, dismantle that because it's otherwise it will take us 10 turns to convert and I don't really have time for that. So let's just dismantle that as well, the Shrine of Canunus. So, yep, get rid of that and then we'll build it back up into a Shrine of Jupiter. Okay, so unfortunately... That has been my time, but a pretty awesome battle there nonetheless, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.